I think it's time we talked about Corgi. So yeah, Corgi um, was, was my favourite diecast vehicle, grow, vehicle manufacturer growing up, my toy. Um, obviously, the Batmobile is my favourite toy of all time. The, the Aston Mine, all the, the cars they did were fantastic. And going forward on this channel, there's going to be a lot of Corgi. I've rejoined the Corgi Club, so they'll be getting a model a month to review. So that's looking forward to that. We're getting the Aston Martin bubble box and we're getting in October the Batmobile. The first re-release of the Batmobile since the, since the 80s. And it's going to be the original one, which I do have. But I, I couldn't, it's, it's my favourite toy of all time. I couldn't not order it. So we're going to just have a look through some of the catalogues that we found in the uh, the job lot that we got from British Toy Auctions and I'm going to talk a bit about Corgi as well so let's look through the catalogues um, prototype for the Buck Rogers there it does have the the, the proper colour in there um, it does have the bar across I've done a video on cutting that off and obviously the missiles come out there when they, sh they should really come out here but yeah they come out there and those wings wings look static on that one uh with swing wings and rocket launchers so that was this is this is 1980s the 1980 catalog so there's the james bond stuff there still still getting with the db5 still going with that but um the spy will love me and the uh, Moonraker, Moonraker is still there going along. This is like three years after. That box set is lovely. I'd love that. There's a few box sets I do want. Look at the the Superman stuff because that's more. Um, what's uh, Superman was seventy nine, wasn't it? So yeah, this is this is why this is popular. Spider Man as well. Spider Man the movies, the Spider Man movies were about as well around this time. So there's a bat. There's there's your Batman. Still Batman. Still, still uh, at the forefront there. It, even though it was '66, it was rerun in the '70s. Obviously, uh, there's the, the the gift set that I've made. I do need the bat. I do need the Batman. I've got the bike. I just need the Batman now for that. There's a Hulk and Captain Marvel and Captain America. There, these these weren't very popular. I remember having the Hulk. Um, because that was on TV, where the the Penguin Mobile and those they weren't on TV, so they weren't very popular. There's the Spider Man again. Obviously, the TV and film is a big thing for for Corgi for me. I had the Saint, I had um, Staskin I had the Kojak, and had the Professionals. I don't know how if I had the big professionals. I had, the, I think I must have had the little professionals, the the Cargis Juniors, which we'll show in a bit. So we've got all the police vehicles, pretty cool, and the helicopters. Just obviously, um, just back, it's a back copter, changed into, uh, made into a different uh, colour scheme, different stickers on. The, the, all the same helicopter, just just changed slightly with colouring. Fire engines. Um, I've just picked up that one, which is pretty cool. I think it's that one. It's very similar to that. I remember that one. I'm, if I remember right, that what that actually it's a working water cannon. Yes, an electronic siren on that one. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we'll quickly go through these. I I just really want to look at the TV and film ones, but we've got a number to go through. I had that. You forget what you had. I mean, look at these vans. They're fantastic. <laughs> Got the farming and... I had that recently. That set. That's a, that was a cool set. The dolphin thing as well. Um, big guns. Muppets. These I never had. Never had those. 
I vaguely remember them in the shops, but uh, so Guns of the Cogger Juniors, and there's the, the same, same as the, the big one, the prototype, but it's, it's obviously the smaller version. I think I've got about three of those at the moment, and obviously the little versions of the James Bond, which I do have for all those. I love those. This will get me. I, I do want a Liberator. I would like a Liberator. But you'll see in a minute why this is very peculiar. So again, we've got just the smaller versions of the big cars. Obviously, when they got the license, they did the big ones and the small ones. Again, Batman. That, I like that. I like that copter. Are these two packs? It's very strange two packs anyway. Uh, Supervan, I do have that. And I've got the, I've got that as well, I think. I think I've got got the helicopter and card and I have the van. I also like that police car though. There we go, look. Liberator. It's the same as a Liberator, but a different colour. Now that's from Blake 7. That's just called the Liberator. Uh, it actually says Liberatob. <laughs> so it's just a different colour. Which is weird. Blimp. Had that. Ah, these are the two packs. And the three the triple pack. Look at that. So you got Professionals one. You got Starsky and Hutch one. You got the Batman. You got the uh, Drax helicopter from. Moonraker and the shuttle. Um, where's that? That is. That's that's that. So you've got the different colored Liberator with the Moonraker shuttle. Obviously, just a normal space shuttle and a spaceship. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, th these packs, they didn't. They don't actually look like that. But yeah, finding one of those would be pretty cool. Add that as a garage. So that's 80. I think we've looked at 81 uh, before, but prototype of Dan Dare never actually made it to production. And there is a uh, there is the smaller version as well. There. So yeah, shame they never made that. That might have been pretty cool. So yeah, we've basically got the same stuff. There's, there's the Buck Rogers in production. Uh, yeah, we've got all the same. Damn, the Vegas, I can I can remember the car, but I can't remember the series. That that would be really nice to have either, either of those, but, but definitely the Batman three-pack. It's, uh, it's a different three-pack from the one I've made. So basically, oh, they're bringing out the Cogitronics um, in as well. So yeah, just most of it's exactly the same. We'll quickly go through that one. We've got the two there again. Espanya 82. Oh, the van as well. The bus and the van. Yeah. Wild West. Right, so we're going on to 82 now. This is, I mean, the, the graphic designer. I don't know what I would do in here. I, I like that. I've got, I've got one of those. I'm looking for that. Oh yeah, the Corgitronics. Look at that. That never made it to, uh, to production. Magnum. So we've got Magnum, right? We've got. It's a Magnum Ferrari. Capri there. And then they do with Ferrari, which is exactly the same, but it's not a Magnum Ferrari, but it's exactly the same. I don't know. And there's a Saint, a Saint car painted a different colour. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got basically all the same. I mean, the, the, the Citroen yellow and black, I don't understand that. So I don't know what the graphic designer was doing in this one, it was just... With a black background, it's uh, it's not the best, is it? 
So it's just all the same, basically, just on a different catalog. These are, these are interesting. The Enterprise and the uh, Klingon, which uh, stock press these like prototypes, and the, the nacelles were never long enough. But it looks silver that. The, the the thing I do like is a is a DeLorean that they never made. So this is eighty two. Obviously, Back to the Future was eighty five. So if they made those, they might have still be running. <laughs> Kogi's story begins in 1932, when toy manufacturer Philip Ullman emigrated from Germany to the United Kingdom. Ullman already had 21 years of experience in the toy industry, and soon after arriving in the UK, he founded Metoy Company of Northampton, who began producing a range of template metal wind-up toys. Alongside Ullman's beginnings in the UK toy industry, rival template manufacturers Meccano Limited, owned by Frank Hornby, a name you might recognise, began releasing smaller die-cast metal cars under the name Dinky Toys. The smaller scale toys proved extremely popular, and by following a pause in toy production for both companies during the Second World War, the market began to increase dramatically, with Matchbox Toys arriving in 1953. The team at Metoy realised that to capture a good share of this ever-growing market, it would have to create a new line of toys with a more unique and snappier brand name. In 1955, a list of 70 different names, the iconic Corgi was chosen. Named after the Welsh dog, the Corgi name was chosen for three reasons. Firstly, because it was short and catchy. Second, because the models were to be produced in Swansea. And the third, because of its strong association with the royal family. The official launch date for the Corgi range is at July the 9th, 1956. Corgi's first releases are models of the British cars, including the Ford console, the Austin A50 Cambridge, Maurice Cowley, Vauxhall Velox, Rover 90, Riley Pathfinder and the Hillman Husky. Nearly 65,000 models were sold in 1956. The golden years of Corgi were in the 1960s when Corgi produced the famous Aston Martin DB5 from the James Bond film Goldfinger. The toy is packed with detail and features including pop-out machine guns and a rear bullet force shield and a functioning ejector seat. It goes on to become the best-selling die-cast toy car of all time. In 1962 sees the first production release with an injection moulded plastic interior starting with the Thames Airborne Caravan. Meta diversifies, creating the smaller scale Husky brand as a sister to Corgi and a rival to Matchbox and moves to the adult collector market with the creation of its Corgi classic brand. In 1970 Corgi introduces a whiz wheel range to compete with the Mattel's Hot Wheels series featuring frictionless wheels to increase playability. In 1971 Phil Ullman, founder of the company, passed away. Metoy enters a five year agreement with American manufacturer Fisher Price to produce a range of toys for distribution in Europe. In November 1979, the Dinky Toys factory in Bins Road, Liverpool, closes. In the 1980s, Corgi introduced its electrostatic painting at its Swansea factory. This state-of-the-art painting technology improves the finish of its models. Painting is also introduced during the 1980s to take over the application of the lettering and logos instead of the labels. In 1989, the Corgi base brand is sold to Mattel with the factory in Swansea returned as part of Microlink Industries. For a time, Mattel owns the brand names of Corgi, Dinky and Matchbox. In 1990, production of Corgi toys is moved to China, with the first Corgi model to be made in China is launched. Corgi retains its independence from Mattel as a new company in 1995, renamed as Corgi Classics Limited. The company moves to new headquarters in Leicester. In 1999, Corgi is taken over by American product collector specialist Zindart International Limited is renamed to Corgi International Limited. In 2004, Corgi secures a global license from Warner Brothers to produce models inspired by DC Comics Batman comic book series. In the next few years, numerous entertainment license rights will also be acquired including Harry Potter and the Star Trek franchises. 2006, Corgi celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2008, Hobbies Limited acquires Corgi for £8.3 million, sitting alongside the iconic British toy brands of Hornby, Scalextric 
and ethics. A new line of toy vehicles aimed at preschool children is introduced named Corgi Chunkies, covering lorries, tanks, construction vehicles and more. Corgi produces its first diecast diaries, an aerodrome a blog in 2015, providing an in-depth look behind the scenes of ongoing updates on status of newly announced products. LiDAR scanning is introduced to the Corgi development process, allowing full-size vehicles and aircraft to be scanned to replicate incredible accuracy in the final scale that are diecast products. In 2021, Corgi reissues an Aston Martin DB5 from Goldfinger in a recreation packaging of the original release. 2022 sees the introduction of the first 112 scale motorbike into the Corgi range, the Triumph Scrambler 1200 seen in the 25th James Bond film, No Time to Die. I mean, look, this is this is the Corgi Juniors. They didn't. I don't know what happened to the licenses, but if you see, we've got a, a Corvette and an A-Team van there. Well, that's an A-Team van. So didn't they didn't have the license for it for the A-Team? I mean, it went to Ertel, obviously. Ertel had it. So and we started getting Ertel in this country. So. They might they might have tried to get the license and and and, made, and put things into into production, but look, there's a Night Rider car there. That is a Pontiac Firebird. It's black and it's got a little red scanner at the front. So that is definitely Night Rider. Didn't they get the license? Couldn't they afford the license? Maybe they couldn't afford the license then. Uh, back this this era that it was really going under and the sales were going down which is is is, is a shock but i never saw that i never saw that i know it i know it's, it has been produced i've seen though i've seen one and i do need to get older one but i never saw one back in the day i think this was towards the end of, i wasn't collecting die casts at this time i want to just look at this as well TV and film related. Um, I'm not going to go through it all, but we can look at it. I mean, I had that. I've got one of those. I had one of those. I never had from Thrustbuster. Daktari. Wooster. We've got the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And oh, it's going into Husky, which was Corgi Juniors at the time. Stasky and Hutch. Body and Dial, I had the Saint, I never had the Charlie's Angel, I never had it actually, I never had the Challenge. And then the TV Juniors, uh, the Enterprise there, Chopper Squad, I've seen one of those on eBay, I'd like to get that. Um, so yeah, all the, I mean, look at that. From Man From Uncle, that is a Husky. I think that's a, those two are Husky. And that's a Chopper Squad. And I, I did get the big cars, but I got the little cars as well. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. But this is what I'm. This is what I've um, I pre-ordered. They've made a. They're bringing out a version with a bubble, just just the box and the bubble. So I'm looking forward to getting that. Trying to get one of those. Is you're talking three hundred pound at least for one of those. So they're re-releasing it, so it's where getting it. There's all the James Bond cars. And these are later versions. Obviously not the not the earlier ones. Uh, the Husky. I've got a Husky, Aston, and I've got a Coggy Juniors. Which is basically the same. The wheel's a bit different. There's the, the horse box. I do love that. I'd like to get it on card. Uh, there it is. Um, that. Oh, I thought that was a there was a set. No, there is a, there is a that's it there. That's the set. I have the Jaws van, the helicopter, the Lotus, and the Mercedes. I just need that that boat now. That's a boat I need. Got good junior sets from Spy. All love me. Never had that. Never really wanted that. These are. Oh. Majesty's Secret Service cars. Never had those. Those are worth a fortune. So we're going on to like is the Batmobile. That's the original. 
and that's a later version. Um, talked about that before, I'm not going to go into that again. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's a Husky and the Coggy Juniors versions. I do have both those. I do need a, uh, a trailer for the Bat Boat. The, fun, the funny thing is, that trailer in that is the same as that. But the boat is obviously different. Uh, Junior Heroes, yeah, we've got these. Um, Green Hornet, I've never had that either. Science Fiction. See, they've got the, 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 the Liberator, which isn't the Liberator. And they've got it the wrong way around. Always, it's always getting put the wrong way around. Um, yeah, I've got those on the card, as I say, I've got three of those. It was, it was just fun. Just so fun. Back in the day, collecting these. And this is, this is what we get now. Classic era. So we're getting all like different TV shows with the little figures in it and things like that. Oh, look at that. New Avengers. Um, Saint, Faulty Towers, Steed there. Professionals. Oh, the Dad's Army. That's cool. So you've got Knight Rider, A Team. So up to date, oh, the, that would be nice to, to pick up. The General Lee. Um, did the DeLorean have? I don't know what that is. The special DeLorean car feature in the back of the huge film is standard packaging as used for the relaunch of the TV and film related ranges. All oh, right, they use that to, to re relaunch it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you got Scooby Doo. I've got the um, Blues Brothers. I love that. So yeah, I was thinking about the, the Mr. Bean. It's like a caricature figure of Mr. Bean in that. So one later they didn't have that in. Uh, the Doctor Who, they, they brought out all this nice Doctor Who range. The Batman range as well. So yeah, Italian job. That's pretty cool. So yeah, um, just love Corgi. Just love it. And as I say, there'll be more coming. Uh, Batmobile, that's of mine. Uh, the, I forgot what I've co got coming now, next. Uh, you'll find that'll be a surprise. You'll be surprised to me as well. So thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. I hope you love Corgi as much as me, and if you don't, well, I'll do a Matchbox video and I'll do a Dinky video. I've got a Dinky catalogue here, if, uh, if anybody lo likes Dinky. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, do, I do the history of Dinky. There's some pretty cool things in Dinky and that, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be with you.